the Middle East in particular. You take a look at what's going on in Iran and the vicious, the vicious situation that's taking place there and the number of people that are being killed and slaughtered. You take a look all over the world. We're not going to be able to deal with, let's not deal with anybody. Maybe the world should be held accountable because the world is a vicious place. The world is a very, very vicious place. You look at what's happening in China and you look at what's happening in so many different countries. I could name many countries. You look at what's happening with terrorism all over the world. So first we heard from Pompeo, then the president. Clearly, this is a message that they have now been wanting to drill home when we're hearing it from multiple administration officials. The world is to blame. It's a dark and vicious world, and that is to blame for Jamal Khashoggi's murder. Yeah, they're making the world darker and more vicious by absolving the Saudis of this terrible crime, and they're engaging in moral equivalence, something that Republicans used to castigate, this notion that how can you judge anybody because everybody is guilty of something? That's exactly the, the moral fallacy that President Trump and Secretary Pompeo are putting out there. And, it, and it's true, yes, of course, there are human rights abuses in the world in places like Syria and China, et cetera. But that doesn't excuse what the Saudis did. And this is not business as normal to lure a journalist into your embassy in a foreign country and dismember him, especially when that journalist happens to write for an American newspaper. This is not normal. This is not something we can or should accept. The president has been pretty transparent about his thoughts on the economic issues that are factoring into his decision, what he's saying, the relationship with Saudi Arabia. Here's what Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell, who sits on the House Intel Committee, tweeted. He said, I would be willing to pay a few more cents at the pump if it meant my president would condemn the butchering of a U.S. resident and journalist, Khashoggi, Free Press. You see those hashtags. So obviously Swalwell might be willing to pay a few more cents uh, per gallon, but a lot of Americans might not. Well, there's no evidence that we would be paying more per gallon at the pump if we held the Saudis responsible for what they have done. They are not selling oil as a favor to the United States. They're selling it because that's how they make money. And this, by the way, Saudi Arabia, it's 13 percent of world oil production. We produce more than they do. We don't actually need Saudi oil. We are energy independent, which is something that Donald Trump brags about all the time. So this notion that we have to overlook the Saudi crimes, otherwise the price of oil is going to skyrocket, that is just flat out false. Let's listen to former CIA chief Leon Panetta. Here's what he said. I think the, the danger here is that, uh, you know, the president may talk about America first, but essentially what he's saying is America is for sale uh, to the highest bidder. Do you agree? I agree completely. It's not America first. It's American arms sales first. And Donald Trump is vastly exaggerating the benefits that we get from those arms sales. As we pointed out on this network time after time, there is not actually $110 billion worth of U.S. arms that is being sold to Saudi Arabia. The actual figure is about $14 billion. And it is not creating thousands of American jobs. It is creating maybe a few hundred American jobs. And the Saudis cannot readily go to another arms buyer anyway because they are locked into American arms. Their entire military is equipped with American hardware, so they can't just go to the Chinese or Russians. So this notion that we have to sacrifice all of our principles for the price of oil or, or because we want to sell arms to the Saudi Arabia, it's repugnant. We don't need to do that. We are a giant economy. We don't need the Saudis. They need us far more than we need them, and we can afford to hold them accountable for this terrible crime that they have committed. Max Booth, thanks for being here. I appreciate Thank your perspective. You. Big developments in the Russia probe. An associate of Trump ally Roger Stone now confirming he is.